What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a pretty fun video for me actually. We're going to be upgrading the head unit in this truck. Reason for that is the truck has a little black box. It's an RCA adapter that's going to an aux cord. Um, and so that aux cord is broken and only half of the speakers are working right now. Obviously I could replace it with a new black box to change out the RCAs and get a new aux cord. But that would only be not really solving any of my problems because sound system needs to be upgraded. We're gonna pre-wire it for an amp. Uh, next couple of videos we're gonna be doing amp and sub install and speaker install. And along with that, we're gonna have to upgrade the alternator and do all of those things. So today's gonna be a start off video. It's gonna be maintaining factory steering wheel control. So I'm gonna show that as well. Another main thing that's gonna happen today, um, we're gonna have to run some errands. I also gotta wash the truck. It's pretty dirty and filthy. So I'm gonna get all that handled, but I gotta go run some errands. So let's jump in with a first start in the morning. Have a couple angles on this, so hopefully it sounds good. kind of the play we're gonna be installing it in the truck whole head unit system not doing speakers yet or an amplifier or a sub we're gonna pre-wire it for all that stuff so it'd be kind of plug-and-play which is gonna be nice so here's what we're gonna do we have a dash kit for super duties there is the part number and it is from pack I got all this stuff off of Crestfield, so it should be pretty good. I mean, obviously it's just a plastic piece, but hopefully it mounts up pretty well. I got the factory, factory steering wheel control retention. So there's the part number. Um, so this should make everything kind of plug and play. And then piece resistance is an Alpine ILX W650. This happens to be one of their like skinniest double dins in the lineup, but let's go ahead and unbox this guy and I'll show you what I mean. All right. So within the box you get three things. This is all your wires uh, to connect it to your factory connected to all your factory wires. So all this is gonna be your main power ground, um, ignition, you know, control wires. Here's your remote wire for your subwoofer. This is pretty much your main power harness. So your yellow is your battery, main battery wire. It is fused. And then you're gonna have your ground, your ignition switch wire, and then you're gonna have your P-Control, which is your remote wire, and then your antenna wire. The rest of these wires are gonna be your speaker wires. Um, so if you have factory amplifier, any of that stuff, hopefully these guys mount into the wiring that's in here and it can just be all plug and play. Next up, you're gonna have all of your front-facing camera, rear-facing camera, pre-outs. 
and then this is going to be your subwoofer and speaker preouts for your amplifiers. This is your USB extension wire. So this does have wired CarPlay and wired Android Auto, which is good. But this is going to be your USB extension, so we can throw a phone cord in here, have this plugged in the back of the radio, and route it to where we need it so it's not clogging up a whole bunch of behind the radio. You get this out of here. And then last but not least, within your package is going to be your microphone. Uh, so you can do hands-free calling. All right, so next, we're going to have our factory steering wheel control interface. This is your antenna extension, I believe. It'll be your antenna extension for AM, FM radio. And this guy here, it's looking like it's going to have everything on here. 100%. So that's a plus. So hypothetically, all of this should plug into this. And then we'll make it neat and tidy. And then this plugs into the factory connectors. This is the steering wheel control side. This plugs into the factory connectors with this in line to retain factory steering wheel controls. Let's see how it goes. I will be the first to say I am not good at wiring. So I'm going to do my best. If it looks horrible, you know that I did it. All right, before wiring, let's get into this. This is the Alpine head unit that I picked up, the ILX W650. So, like I said, it is a very shallow double din. It is nice. It is all touch screen, so even like the mute and the volume up, volume down menu. There are some pretty cool features with this where you use two fingers to like swipe up and it'll increase your volume, use two fingers to swipe down, it'll decrease your volume, use two fingers, swipe left and right, it'll change song and or station. Um, a lot of people were complaining about the brightness of this, especially driving at night. One thing that I learned um, is if you hold down the menu button and just keep holding it, it'll go into some advanced settings of how to adjust your brightness and a lot of other things. So this does come standard with four volt preouts, which is, I mean, it's okay, five volt would be better, but four volt is fine for um, just enjoying some sort of stereo with a little bit more amplification. Um, it is a 45 watt output head unit. So, I mean, 45 watts RMS, so it's not amazing, but it is going to definitely work harder than the factory stereo that is in there and push the speakers a little bit more. In doing that, better sound quality, but it is factory 2005 speakers, so it's not going to be amazing. On the, bo on the bottom of it though too, just to help you out with wiring, it tells you what color wire is what on the Alpine uh, harness. So that's a big plus. That'll help out a lot, especially with the wiring diagram for the steering wheel control module to match up all of the speakers. So you'll be able to use your equalizers and everything on here to kind of dial in your head unit, if that makes sense. So everything is super clean. It's not like it used to be where the wires are coming out of them. Mock up the harnesses and then you can plug it into the actual receiver. So not a bad deal. It does have Sirius XM capability, but you do have to purchase a separate Sirius XM antenna for that and then also pay for the XM service, which, you know, not very good as it is, unless you get it from the dealership when you buy a car. Um, does have front and rear camera capability, one for your microphone and one for your remote. Has an antenna extension and a USB so you can have charging and CarPlay capabilities and or Android Auto capabilities with your phone. So with this, I'm going to just read this wiring diagram and match it up with this wiring diagram and then we'll go into the truck, pull the truck apart and wire it all together. So basically here's what I'm trying to do. Here's all the wires that need to be connected to this harness. This is the steering wheel control harness. This is the Alpine harness. So basically, this is what I'm using. It's a solder connector. It's like a heat shrink connector. These two pieces, red pieces, are adhesive. 
and this is solder inside and you connect the two wires on the inside and heat it until the solder melts and then once that happens the wires are connected and then I heat shrink over them so hopefully the whole harness will kind of look like that and then I can tape it all together and make it look nice and fancy the main thing I'm hoping for is that the stereo works and turns on after I connect all of this a bonus would be if my steering wheel controls worked. that would be awesome but we're gonna have to wait and find out if I do all this work all this tedious work and it doesn't turn on we're gonna figure out why but I'm not gonna be very happy about it so I'm gonna get to doing all of this mess and we're gonna find out how it turns out stay long So I lost some of that footage, memory card was full, and I didn't see it. So here is the finished harness for the most part. So this is the steering wheel control side. This is going to be your vehicle speed sensor, I believe. Obviously we'll sense this since the truck has our volume by speed, that's what it is, volume by speed. You need the speed sense wire to control volume, but I have it turned off right now and I can have it turned off in the settings. So technically this doesn't need to be connected. Um, this is a P control with a resistor for if you had a factory amplifier. This orange is your illumination light. I don't necessarily know what that means. It doesn't tell me anything, obviously. Um, this is for a factory pre-out if you have a factory amplifier or this is for the factory subwoofer these are for factory um, pre-outs for if you have a factory amplifier this is for a Kenwood radio these all have to be plugged in obviously but there's really no need in running this one that one or this one necessarily, which is this plug. This all goes to factory plugs, so I'm going to plug them in. But I don't have a factory amplifier, so this is the amplifier turn on wire with a resistor. This is for factory subwoofer. I don't have a factory subwoofer. This is your main harness to the steering wheel integration. That plugs into here, and then this little guy plugs into here for amplifier and all that stuff, which I don't have. So, do not need that don't need this really all I have done I have all the wires connected with the power wire everything in here this is for connecting from the head unit to the amplifier that I'm going to be putting in so this I do need I'm gonna tuck it away until I have the amplifier I'll pull the dash back out connect that <clears throat> orange is your reverse lights to kick on your backup camera and then yellow is your parking brake wire that you have to connect to be able to get into some of the advanced settings and set up features on the Alpine. So we're gonna hop in the truck pull the dash apart get the factory radio out and then we're gonna put in the dash kit and then start plug and playing all the harnesses. Let's get it. Alright so with everything out the dash pretty much deleted you have access to your radio right here uh, there is four, looks like six millimeter bolts. Take it, pull it up, and out. We should be good. So, just like that, correct myself, it was four seven millimeter nuts that pretty much are just held on by tabs here. They're different in the Mustangs and all that stuff where you need like a special tool to push in and pull out. But if you yank the dash out, come out with these four little bolts, bolt holes, and out she comes. 
So now we're going to plug in the harness, all that, get the dash kit set up, and then figure out how the Alpine is going to sit inside of here. Alright, with everything installed, all the wires plugged in, this is all factory AC control and all that. It's pretty easy to get this dash off, so I'm going to run the RCAs and all that stuff when I install the speakers. Here's the first shot to see if it'll kick on. Everything's plugged in, harnesses, steering wheel control, microphone, USB, all the speaker wires, all the power wires, everything. So, moment of truth. kicks on. First thing I want to check is obviously sound, but I want to see if my steering wheel controls still work. We got sound. Let's do FM, let's do... Steering wheel controls don't work. But let's check out a radio station. See? There's a box of crazy parts sitting in the trunk of that 65. Alright. We got stereo. Now let's figure out these steering wheel controls real quick because I use those a lot. And I'm not one to lose them. So. I'm gonna grab the manual real quick. Let me double check and I'll see if it will work. All right, so steering wheel controls, they work. Okay, they work. So here's what I did. I looked at the manual. This, um, SWRFD-60L one of the wires that I said we didn't need plugs into the other side and has an aux cord pretty much that goes to the back of the radio right next to your microphone input so I plugged that in and then plugged it into the microphone input it's the one with the blue wire but the blue wire we do not need because that is for JVC or Kenwood radio decks so I connected that in into the back of the radio and voila we have sound perfect alright so I'm gonna throw this dash back together real quick now that I made sure everything works plug in all this make sure my climate controls work all my lights work everything and then uh, we're gonna hit the road putting it back together alright guys so a little bit of a process not too bad honestly if you just read the directions pretty pretty good um, it's really not that hard at all. Um, one thing, take your time on your wiring connections and wiring up your harness, your head unit harness to your steering wheel, steering wheel control harness. Um, make that clean. It makes your life a lot easier without having to like finagle through wires. Butt connectors are a very easy solution, but if you take the time to solder and or get the soldering crimps like I have, um, that saved me so much time. Better connection. You can hear it in the sound quality. It sounds good and better than butt connectors. There's really a lot less chance of wires coming undone, especially when they're soldered. It takes a lot to pull them apart. And then you have shrink wrap on top of it. You know, the whole nine. So, I'll give you a look inside here. Head unit in. Everything works. Everything's cleaned up, put back together. Super simple, I'm telling you. If you take your time on the wiring, it goes super smooth. Crutchfield made it super simple to really install this and they have really good prices. If you guys want to check out anything down below, I'll put a link in the description to exactly what I bought. It's not a sponsored video by any means. I just want you guys to have an ease of convenience when putting it together. The steering wheel retention harness worked out really well and it was perfect, especially for this old truck too. It came with all your speaker wires and everything you need to connect to the Alpine harness and make it perfect. We'll throw it down in the description box below. Go check it out, it's pretty easy and cost effective. One thing with Crutchfield is if you buy more than one thing, they add discounts on top of it, so it's like a compounding discount kind of, depending on what you buy. Super easy, super cheap. Dash kit, 
steering wheel retention, and head unit was only like 350 bucks when this head unit retails for 449 so it's all name brand stuff all nice stuff just at a really good cost effective price thank you guys for watching this video if you have any questions at all hit me up you can direct message me hit me on instagram you can comment on this video i'll do my best to get back to every single comment thank you guys for sticking around to the end of this video i appreciate you watching and we'll see you guys in the next one when we go to install a subwoofer and some speakers see ya